What's up guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits and inside of this Lightroom tutorial, we are going to be taking a look at some free raw files that you can actually edit along with me. So head over to signatureedits.com slash free dash raw dash photos, grab these free raw files, download them, and we can edit together. We're gonna to be covering everything from portraits to landscapes, harsh lighting, soft lighting, you name it. So let's get started together. I'll see you in a second. All right, so I'm gonna import these photos. We're not gonna apply a preset right now. We're just gonna head into the develop module and start having some fun together. So we'll start at the beginning because that makes sense. Over here. All right, so first assessment. Obviously it's raining pretty hard in this photo. ISO 80, 35 mil. Uh, if you ever wanna see the info from what camera was taken, you can hit the I key on your keyboard and it'll show you some info right there. So it's taken with a 35 mil, a nice Leica Sumalux lens. Interesting. Now we do have some blur because of the rain and it looks almost a little noisy, which is sort of weird. There's a lot of grain going on in this image. So my guess is, and we've also got some like color noise, that this was maybe a cheaper camera uh, or just a smaller sensor camera. That's why it's not as clean. Still a beautiful image. So we're gonna go ahead and get started by just adding some denoise and fixing that. We're gonna fix the stuff that needs fixing, then we're gonna do the creative stuff. So I'm gonna zoom in here, apply some noise reduction a little bit. You're gonna see it clean up as I do that. And I'm mostly looking for some color noise reduction because you can see there's a lot of just like mixed colors going on in there. So when we do that, that'll clean that up. Good. We can add some sharpening. Maybe. It actually looks pretty sharp already. Now, what elements of this photo are awesome and what elements are kind of detracting? I think most of this shot is really cool. It's centered on this flag right here in this building. But this green bush here is kind of the brightest part of the photo other than the sky. And it's drawing my eye even though it doesn't lend to the photo itself. So I'm going to go down here to my HSL and grab my yellows, desaturate them, and my greens, desaturate them. And you see how right away that's less obtrusive. It's no longer taking up so much space in my eyes. But we did desaturate the roof a little bit. So we're going to add some yellow saturation back. And then I'm going to grab a radio filter. I'm just going to take the contrast down, texture, clarity, dehaze down a little bit, and then the exposure down. Just darken that bush. Kind of like that. Add a little brushing just onto this area. Okay, so here's before and here's after that. There we go. In fact, I think I could clean that up a little bit more with my brush. If you press O, you'll see your overlay. I don't really need to have it affect this part of the image at all, so we'll erase it off of there in this building. Good. Next, let's add some pop to this image. So it's already got quite a bit of color. I don't think I need to add any more to it, but I could maybe add a little bit of contrast. I'm going to raise the blacks. I'm going to see if I can get some of that detail in the sky back, but no, it's been blown out, so I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to embrace kind of this blown out look. And then I'm just going to add a nice S-curve to it, add some pop, raise my blacks up even more. So here's before, and here's after. Nothing super radical, we're just sort of shifting the light, shifting the contrast a little bit. I've blown out the peak of this roof a little bit, so I'm going to grab my adjustment brush. Brush on there and just take the highlights and the contrast down a little bit, that'll save it. Good. And then from there, it's really just a matter of creatively, what do you want to do? I'm going to do a little bit of dodging and burning. So we're just going to take our highlights and our whites up with a nice little brush. And just the sections of this building I want to pop a little bit more, I'm going to brighten up slightly. So we're going to brush on these window sills, on these windows, just like that, maybe these right here and it's about doing subtle little things so as we do this little by little by little we don't want anything that's really extreme and obvious that we've edited the image we're just slowly shape shaping and shifting the light All right so this is just a first pass and then I could go through again later and add a few more details and slowly we're gonna start adding dimension to this scene that's really all there is to it so here's before and here's after. You can see how the building... Oh, come on. Here's after. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> Let's do that again because that was entirely unhelpful. Before. After. 
So we're just slowly bringing out some dimension in the scene. And we can do the same thing in this building. Just kind of highlight these windows like that. All right? And you're just looking for areas that are already brighter areas in general. So you're going to take your highlights, you're going to exaggerate them. And it's slowly going to add dimension, depth, interest, and contrast, but in a really beautiful selective way that you're not going to get just by raising the contrast up. Okay, now I'm going to make a new brush, and this time we're going to burn. So I'm going to take my highlights down, shadows down, blacks down. There's no perfect amount here. It's just sort of feeling it out, seeing what looks good and feels good. And then I'm going to grab the shadows, say on this flag, yellow. And we're just going to paint in, make them feel a little bit more shadowy. So here's before, here's after. So those little things, if you multiply that over the entire image, so I'll do it in the windows, make them maybe a little bit darker. This brush might be a little bit more extreme than it needs to be. So I'll undo that. And set it to auto mask and see if auto mask is going to do a better job for me. Eh, not so good, but it's okay. You get the main point. We're just adding depth. So see those windows before and after? Here's before and here's after how much more depth we're adding to the image. And I'd encourage you, it doesn't have to be this photo, but grab a photo and just practice this, because as you get better at it, you're going to find that your photos improve massively as a result of just really getting a sense of where the shadow should be, where the highlights should be, and how you can use that to really enhance the detail of your images. Now here's a fun tip for you. Most of the time, Your areas of shadow, like the deepest shadow, happen to be right next to the areas of deepest highlight. That's where you're going to get the most bang for buck. Okay, so this obviously looks ridiculous, but what I'm doing is just brushing it roughly, and then I'm going to take my eraser by holding down Alt, take the flow down, and just erase off this section until it's kind of blended where I want it. Right around there, maybe. So, before the dodging and burning. Hello. And after. So we could do this all day. I'm not going to bore you with it. We're going to move on. But hopefully that kind of gave you some really neat, interesting ideas to start playing around with. Okay. Beautiful portrait shot. We're going to start by grabbing our white balance and fixing that. So somewhere around there feels good. There's no perfect recipe. Sometimes auto does a great job. Other times it's horrible. I think that that is just still too cool. So I'm going to warm it up a little bit. But that's just my taste. Okay, then I'm going to brighten it up somewhere around there. And now if I zoom in here, you can see that her eyes not really sharp. For whatever reason, the focus looks like it was just slightly off. That's fine. I'm going to grab a brush and reset it by holding Alt and hitting Reset up here. And just brush onto her face and her hair. Add a little bit of texture, a little bit of sharpness, maybe a little clarity. So before, after. Nothing too extreme, just a little bit to get that detail back. And you can see we're doing better, but we haven't gone all the way. That's because we're sharpening in stages. We don't need to sharpen her entire face every single pore. We just really want to add some overall sharpening that's more subtle, and then sharpening to the specific areas that should be sharp. So her lips, her eyes, tip of her nose, we're going to grab our texture, bring that up. Grab her sharpness, bring that up. Maybe even add a little bit of contrast, because contrast is also going to give the appearance of a sharper image. Okay, so here's before that, and here's after. Pretty subtle, not doing a whole lot. But if we look, here's before and here's after, we've started to add some sharpening in there. Now there's only so much we can do. And I definitely took the highlights too far, you can see, because her eyes appear to be glowing. So that's something to watch for. If you zoom out, that's when you're really going to notice it. So we're going to take our whites back down and our highlights back down. Okay. Now I'm going to brush on her hair here. Now I do have a hair lashes preset that I can grab. These are included with all of the signature edits presets. If you happen to buy them, you'll get these as well. Um, or you can just pause the video, copy it, and apply it. Save it as your own preset. I don't care. 
I'll help you speed up your workflow or you can do it yourself. Both is good. So before. Oh man, Lightroom is struggling. Before. After. Nothing super extreme. Now I'm going to make the subject stand out in the background a little bit more because the background is not super interesting and it's already out of focus. So I'm going to take the exposure down a little bit. Invert my mask by pressing apostrophe. And that overlay goes away and comes back with the O key, if you don't know that already. Okay, then I'm going to take my texture down. Clarity down a little bit. Dehaze down a little bit. It's one interesting thing. I feel like they should almost call it haze, because you can take it down and put it up. But I guess that would be confusing too, so what can you do? Something like that. We could increase the contrast overall. Maybe raise those highlights a little bit. Because if we're not affecting the main subject, we can push the contrast a lot farther, right? So I could take my blacks down a little bit. Whites up a little bit. So, without further ado, we'll make a mess. Here's before, and here's after. I think for me, that's looking pretty okay. I might brighten up her face a little bit. Easiest way to do that, actually, is just take the contrast down. That'll naturally brighten things up. And then lift the highlights and the whites just a little bit. That's my favorite way to do it. It's more transparent, and then you can just brighten things up as you need to. It's like a mobile spotlight. Okay. Before. After. Sure. Let's continue. Okay, got a lady in a pool. Obviously, she was feeling like a swim. So... We've got some weird mixed light going on here. It's really harsh. This was definitely taken with a flash, but then there's also the background ambient light, which is really warm and tungsten-y, so we've got two mixed light temperatures. So the first thing that I'm going to attempt to do is to darken this area of the photo because the flash is coming from over here. So it's way brighter than the rest of the image, and it's also way cooler. So we're going to warm it up as well. Add some magenta and just try and match it kind of towards what the background light is like. We're going to keep the highlights up a little bit. Take the shadows down and the blacks down. And all I'm trying to do is just match it, make it more consistent across the entire image. Now we could spread it out right over our model, but I think I'm going to treat her separately. So I'm going to drag out this transition like that. Now I'm going to grab a new brush or a new graduated filter. I guess I'm not done with graduated filters. Let's keep going. I'm going to do the same thing from this corner of the image because it's also a little bit too bright. Okay, something around there. So now we've evened out the light a little bit and we've made the brightest part of the image our subject rather than this corner of the shot. Next, I'm going to fix her face. And by that, I mean it's a really, really harsh light. So we're going to take the contrast down, the highlights down, texture down, clarity down. That's going to smooth things right out. And I'm going to add detail later. Might even add some dehaze just to get that harshness out of there. Okay. And I could treat the rest of her skin as well. I think I'm going to leave the outfit because that's okay for it to have some harsh highlights on it. Okay, so here's before that brush, and here's after. So we've lost some detail, yes, but we've also made it far less just grossly over contrasty. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in on her face. Maybe not quite that far. And we're going to add some detail back. So I'm going to go down here to my Add Texture brush. I'm going to start with her hair. And this is a pretty subtle brush. Like You can see it working, but it's not doing huge amounts of things. <laughs> so I'm just highlighting different areas that I want to bring out the texture, like this zipper around her. I'll go with the lips, the eyes, the eyebrows. Good, something like that. Okay. And then as I'm doing this, I'm noticing that we're still kind of harsh up on her forehead. So I'm going to add another brush. And 
try and mitigate that a little bit. So take our texture down, clarity down. Okay, that's a little bit better. Before, after. Smoothing things out, we're going to add some highlights and some shadows back in in a second here. I'm going to grab my hair and lashes brush. We're going to go over the eyebrows again. Good. Grab this spot under her cheek, that contouring. And then we're going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to grab our highlights, bring them up a little bit, whites up a little bit, and the areas of highlight on her face. So top of the cheekbones, top of the nose, these little dimples here, teeth, anything that should be a highlight, tip of the chin. So here's before, and here's after. Just adding a little bit of dimension back. And do the same thing, but with the shadows down and the blacks down a little bit. And anywhere there was naturally a shadow, we'll try and bring it out a little bit more. Under the chin. Under the lips. Under the nose. The side of the nose. Okay. So if we go before and after, you can see... We've cleaned up the skin quite a bit. It's maybe still a little bit bright, so I could take my overall exposure down. Somewhere around there feels pretty good. And then I am going to try and brighten her eyes a little bit. Just going to take the highlights up a little. Contrast down. Exposure up. Whites up. Something like that. And then we'll zoom in a little bit more, tackle those teeth, and just make them a little bit whiter. So if you ever want to make whiter teeth, easiest way, most of the time they're too yellow, so you just grab your white balance, take it back like that. So here's before and here's after. Okay. Now, you could do all sorts of different things at this point. Uh, creatively, we could just mess around with the image overall. I'm going to take the highlights up a little bit. Shadows are probably pretty good. It depends on the vibe you're going for, right? But so far, we've made some progress on this shot. Here's before, and here's after. I would even make it a little bit darker, probably like that. Now, one last thing we could do that I think would be really helpful is to do some dodging and burning on the pool itself. So the areas of kind of highlight in these waters, in these waters. <laughs> I am way better at talking when I'm not multitasking, trust me. But basically, we're just going to add some dimensionality to the shot and to this water by grabbing the parts that are lighter and making them even more lighter. Even more lighter. <laughs> See, I told you, I'm really great at talking. Oh, that is not, not blended at all, Ryan. Now, a quicker way to do this, if you wanted to just experiment, see if it works, be to do a range mask. So let me show you. I'm going to just brush on everything. Okay. Now I've brightened everything and I don't necessarily want to do that. I'm going to erase it off of her because I don't want to highlight this area anymore. I'm going to go to range mask, set it to luminance, and then grab the range. If you press O, you can see that the mask is covering everything. And as I grab that range and set it up, turn it up, it's only going to grab the highlights in the image. So now, press O again, we can selectively contour our image without having to manually go through and brush that. So it can be helpful sometimes. Maybe add a little bit of clarity, a little bit of dehaze, a little sharpness, a little exposure. Press O so you can see what you're doing. Something like that. So here's before that, and here's after. I definitely added too much clarity and sharpness and stuff like that, so we'll get rid of that. But that's a really fast way to do it. And then we are just going to brighten her up a little bit. Okay. Now, 
I could keep editing for days, as I'm sure so could you. But for now, I'm going to call that a day. One last thing I'm going to do is try and set these candles on fire. Easiest way, grab these little guys. Oh, let me just reset, doing that backwards. Grab the spot where it should be lit. Okay, use the spot removal tool. Go over to one of these lit lamps. And if we're lucky, we'll be able to pull this off. If we set it to clone, maybe. And then set our feather way up. And our opacity down. Come on. You can do it. Okay, it was a long shot. Might be more of a Photoshop job. But sometimes, sometimes you can get away with it. Let's just pretend like we're done. <laughs> you can see that's not really blended. But if we were to zoom in again, just do a little brush on either side of the candle and grab this little tricky thing, Sunflare Subtle. It's going to add some glow to the image, get rid of some of the contrast, hopefully. And I don't know why it's doing this super weird banding around it. Maybe because the spot removal is trying to do something weird. I don't know. But sometimes that'll work and you can add some glow like that with a combination. Today! doesn't appear to be working, so pretend like it did. <laughs> Head over into Photoshop and do it there. That'll be your best bet. Okay, moving on. We got a really cool woodsy vibe photo. So I love this shot. I think it's going to be absolutely magic once we're done. Nice job, Daniel Severda. Severda? Sorry if I got that wrong. So first things first, I'm going to grab a preset and call it a day. Just kidding. But I will maybe start with the preset to save some time. Mm, now that's not helpful for you. We're going to warm it up. We're going to grab our exposure and bring it down where it needs to be, somewhere around there. Now we're going to have a little bit of trouble with the shot simply because it was taken kind of middle of the day, so the lighting's pretty harsh. It's, we're going to have a hard time getting that kind of like moody, woodsy look if that's what we're going for, simply because it's going to be a very bright shot no matter what you do. So I'm going to add a little bit of contrast with the tone curve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Raise my blacks up even more. So here's before and here's after. We just warmed it up, kind of tackled some of the problem areas. Now, our next task is going to be just evening out the light a little bit. So our cabin is a little bit too shadowed. So I'll start by brightening it up. Somewhere around there. It's getting better. I'm going to do another radial filter, do the same thing. We're just brightening it up slightly by raising the highlights, maybe lower the contrast a little bit. Okay. Now we could clean up some different stuff in this image. We could maybe tackle this cup. See if we can clean it up. You can tell that Lightroom is struggling today. Try this again, just need to make my brush bigger. Hold down shift and you can adjust the amount of feather. Try one of these. Okay, that's better. Um, other stuff. These highlights on the grass, while really nice, are also a little bit too bright. So I just want to even out the lighting of the entire scene a little bit. So these super bright areas of highlight, I'm going to brush on really quick. We're going to use our range mask technique here. But roughly, I'm just going to try and grab them all. Okay, press O. Good. Now, it can be as simple as going into our range mask, luminance. Grab the luminance and make sure you're only grabbing those super bright highlights. Press O again. And I can take my overall exposure down. And take the blacks down in those areas. Maybe. 
sometimes by taking the exposure down but adding a little bit of highlights and a little bit of whites it'll make it a little bit more transparent so here's before and here's after it's not that I'm opposed to those highlights it's just that I want to add the contrast to everything so as I add contrast it'll make those highlights even brighter again and things will feel more balanced tip of this cabin still too dark so we're going to attempt to brighten it a little bit more Okay, and then this area of the image where we've got some smoke going on. Still too bright. So let's just brush in there. Reset, take our highlights down, whites down, contrast down a little bit. Okay, so what in this image is telling a story. I think the cabin obviously is the main focal point, so we want to make sure that that is really standing out, which it's starting to. And then the car, I think, is also part of the journey. It's like everybody knows you load up the car, you arrive out at the lake, and this is maybe the moment where you're starting to unpack, get comfortable, whatever. So we're going to highlight the car a little bit. Just like that. And then the cabin. Now just needs some good old-fashioned dodging and burning. So, you know the drill. We could go up here. Parts that should be nice and bright. We'll exaggerate. So mainly this wood lattice. The railing. Now these trees look like they could be helped out a little bit on the top. They're slightly too dark. Okay. And then we do some burning. Shadows down, blacks down, same kind of thing. So most of the time the shadow is right next to the brightest part. So I'm not going to bore you with doing this for too, too long, but hopefully you can see how we're adding a little bit of dim dimension. Making things pop. Right, so that's before and after that. Here's our overall scene before and after. I think we've made some progress. I'm not going to stick with it too, too much. The last thing that's really bugging me is the tip of this cabin. In particular, it just looks like it's too dark. So we're going to reset, bring the contrast down, whites up a bit, maybe add a little texture. Eh, I don't know. I'd still mess with it, but for now... Hopefully you got some ideas from that. This part of the tree is really bugging me. At some point, I did a sloppy mask and must have got that tree in there. So we're going to attempt to make it darker. Okay, moving on. <laughs> All right, so I have no idea where this is, but kind of cool. Again, it looks like this was taken with maybe a cheaper lens. It's an 18 mil at 1 25th a second. So that's why it's so blurry. Shutter speed was really low and we're also F22. So we've had this discussion before. I'm sure that uh, whoever this was had their camera probably on auto exposure or shutter priority. And so they had set their shutter really low and then the camera said, oh, no, we have to have F22. Or the other way around, it was on aperture priority or whatever, exposure priority. And they had set the... Um, aperture all the way up to f22 and so the camera had to compensate by bringing the shutter speed down so much that's the thing about using an auto mode oftentimes the cameras will not pick the best settings <laughs> for the photo um, through user error so make sure you know how to use your camera settings properly and learn how to do manual first because that's going to help you a lot okay so i'm just adding some contrast to the overall image uh, if we grab our overall exposure bring it down you can see that the sky actually isn't clipped, so we could maybe recover some of that, which is good. So we're going to adjust it for the entire scene. Then I'm going to grab a brush, do our old range mask trick here, luminance. Set it just to the bright point. Grab our exposure and bring it way down. Okay. Recover some of those highlights. 
And then if you want to add more blue, simply grab your temperature, bring that down towards blue. Okay, and grab our shadows and our blacks down. That's going to help add a little bit of dimensionality to the clouds. We don't want to push it too far because it'll start to feel weird. We could even take our texture down and our clarity down a little bit because I don't want these clouds to have a whole bunch of texture. In fact, as I bring my highlights down, you're going to see that they get kind of like yucky. So we're going to bring it down to around there. Texture down a little bit. See, so here's before and here's after. You might, not, you might not like that. You might actually like it brighter, but I'm going to stick with it. I feel like it helps the image a little. Okay, now... I don't really have any other ideas for this particular image other than to maybe sharpen the point that my eye is naturally drawn to the most, which is this kind of, I don't know what you would call it. Let's call it a complex. This collection of buildings. I'm going to grab my range, bring it down. I'm going to do some really quick dodge and burning by just grabbing our shadows and our blacks and pulling them down in the darkest areas of that image. And we're going to duplicate this mask. And then we're going to grab the range, bring it all the way up this time. Reset that. Take our whites and our highlights up. And then we're going to add some texture and some clarity, maybe even a little dehaze. There you go. Before, after. So you could continue messing around. I'm going to move on. we got a few photos to get through. Love this shot. I think it would be better if it were rotated, maybe? I don't know. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Mm, no. Mm, maybe. Whatever. We'll edit it like this. <laughs> so I'm going to grab my exposure, bring that up. You can see that the contrast is very harsh on her face. I actually don't mind it on the rest, like her shirt in the background. That's okay. But we're going to have to fix that. So let's start there. I'm going to grab a brush. Do my best to avoid the eyes and the lips. I'm going to take the contrast down, texture down, clarity down, dehaze down. Oh, hello, come on. And exposure down. Okay. That's better. So this is just to overall clean up the skin. Now we did lose a little bit, maybe too much highlight, so I'll add that back in. Good. Now we're going to add some texture and some contrast back. Eyes and eyebrows. Lips. Nose. Shadows down. Blacks down. Texture up. Clarity up. Dehaze up. Something like that. Maybe get those earrings. And at the same time, not the hair because that's <laughs> way too much. All right. Next up, we're going to just add a little bit more to the eyes. I think they could be brightened up too slightly. So we'll increase that exposure a little bit. Good, and then the lips could use a little more too. Okay, perfect. Now, these flowers here on the side are pretty clipped, so I'm just going to pull those highlights and the contrast back a little bit. Something like that. Her teeth now, I'm noticing, could be a little brighter. They're nice and white, but they're just not super bright. So we'll raise the whites up a little bit. And then this blanket she's laying on. First off, I'm going to crop out where it's not covering. And then I'm just going to brush really roughly around this blanket. And we can take our texture and our clarity down. Maybe add some dehaze. I don't know. Cool. Something like that. Last of all, because the eyes are the gateway to the soul, we're going to zoom in here and just tackle these irises. We can bring out a little bit more color, a little bit more pop. Reset this brush. Contrast up. Clarity up a little bit. Dehaze up a little bit. Tiny bit of exposure. Perfect. Okay, might have overdone it, but hopefully you see the point. Here's before, here's after. Cool, cool, guy with the guitar on the beach. And the little kid here also on the beach. So let's start by getting rid of the little kid. Okay, done. And whatever this thing is. OK, 
Okay, done. Now I think we could darken everything except for him. Like that. A little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity. And yeah, maybe not. Okay, honestly, I could do a million things with this photo. But I don't really have any specific things calling out to me. So what I'm going to say is, if you have ideas for this photo, comment below. And also, grab it, tag at Signature Edits Co., and post it to Instagram once you've done your finished edit. I would love to see what you come up with. It's a cool shot. Um, yeah, surprise me. Moving on in this direction, we got a really nice, lovely sunset, kind of a building landscape. So, what are we going to do? Let's bring out the colors of the sunset a little bit more. First off, just going to brush on there, set our range mask to color this time. Use our eyedropper. Just select the pink color. You'll see that it hasn't selected everything. So, if we hit shift, you can see there's a plus sign now. We can keep dropping until we grab that whole color range. Good. Now we can add some pink to the sky. A little bit. Just a little bit. And it looks like I still didn't get everything, so this whole color mask might not work so well. So let's just scratch that. Forget the color mask. Let's set it to luminance. Better. Okay. So adding some pink take the exposure down, that'll increase the color. We can add a little bit of exposure overall. Little dehaze might bring out some color too. Really depends what you want. I don't have, again, a specific vision for this. I think this particular shot, there's not really a whole lot to like capture my attention because the buildings themselves aren't super captivating. Um, really, we got this sunset. It's kind of peaceful, kind of nice, but that's about it. So I might even just make this more of like a filmy, dreamy vibe. Bring our highlights down a little bit, shadows up a little bit. Sure. Let's go with that. Before, after, and then we could go down to our color grading. Add even a little bit more color. Cool. I don't know. Moving forward, this shot, we got a lot of the same exact color. So that's one reason that this subject isn't popping off the background so much. The rock she's sitting on, pretty much a shade of skin tones. The foreground, we've got some green grass, but then we've also got this yellow, again, very similar to the skin tone. So I want to separate her from the background a little bit. I'm going to try to do that with some exposure. Try this again. Take our contrast down. Exposure up a little bit, invert, and then I can darken everything down. And if you take your contrast way down, and your white's down, black's up, shadow's up, highlight's down. So we got rid we've gotten rid of a lot of contrast right around her. Now we can add contrast to the whole image without making her too contrasty, if that makes any semblance of sense. I'm grab a radio filter here, just brighten up the area under her hat. Okay. So she's popping off the background a little bit more. Probably a little bit too much, to be honest. Okay, and then we could make this dress maybe a little bit more saturated. Or just separate her from these rocks a little. Just adding a little pop with the tone curve. 
And then we can play around in our HSL, maybe take the green saturation down and the yellow saturation down. Not too much, because we can't get away with that, but somewhere around there, before, after. Lots of things we could do. Maybe brighten up this hat, bring out some texture there. We'll reset it, texture up. Good, and we'll take that same texture brush and just brush maybe on the black of her dress, maybe. Okay, and then her skin overall, the light is a little bit harsh, so we could soften it. Just on these really, really bright spots, her wrist, top of her shoulders, even the top of this dress, this hand. We just want to even things out a little, so take the contrast down, highlights down, before, after, and a little bit of sharpening, and some selective contrast. I'm going to call it a day there. Could you do more? Yes. Did I make this too bright? Definitely, now that I'm looking at it. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. So we're going to dial that back. Take it to where you think it looks good, and then back off by like 20%. I honestly almost think this would look better in black and white. Just because the colors in color, they're not really like blending together in a way that is nice. I think it'll be better in black and white. Then we can push the contrast a little further. Something like that. Before, after. Let's see what you come up with. Tag at Signature Edits Co. Okay, so this one was by Sri Kanth. I'm not exactly sure. Sorry if I got your name wrong. They actually reached out to me and said, Hey, I took this photo the other day. And I cannot edit it for the life of me. Just can't get it to look right. Can you take a look? And I said, sure, we'll feature it in this week's tutorial. So hopefully I can do something. I'm going to take the exposure up on our subject here. And there's not a lot of contrast going on there. So we'll take the contrast up. Some dehaze. Some clarity. Okay, and then you can see that because most of the light coming onto her was from these leaves and being reflected. She's very green. So I'm going to adjust the white balance, add some magenta in there. And then easiest way to brighten her up is going to be with the highlights and the whites rather than raising the exposure even further. Okay, somewhere around there. So here's before and here's after. Is it perfect? No, but it's certainly better. We could take our contrast down overall and that would help too. Maybe even a little bit of shadows, but I'm thinking that it's going to start going unnatural on us. So we could take our overall highlights down. Okay, so we've definitely made some progress in terms of now we can at least see our subject. It's feeling like she's pretty soft. So we could just add some detail. Recover a little bit of sharpness by adding some texture and some sharpness. Something like that. And then these greens, we could play around with the colors. I sort of like the really bright, saturated tropical vibe, but you could maybe take your yellows, the hue, more towards orange and just make them bounce off a little bit more. Bounce. <laughs> That's not the right word. Kind of just contrast with the greens in the scene. We can also desaturate the green, see how you like that. And then sometimes by taking the luminance down, you can get a deeper, richer green. Somewhere like that. And then these light trails are actually really cool, so I'm going to brush on those really quick. Try and bring them out a little by adding some clarity. Maybe even a little dehaze. Okay. And then I think it'd be kind of cool to have like a lens flare at the top here. So let's just see what happens. We're going to grab, do a range mask, and I'm going to set it to luminance. 
I'm going to set the range up a little bit. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want my lens flare to be up here in the top, but I don't want it to be covering up um, these black branches, if that makes sense. I want it to be like it's peeking from in behind. Go down here to my special effects brush, grab sun flare. Take that exposure away the heck up. Something like that. And you can see because of that range mask, it's not affecting uh, these dark areas as much as if it weren't on. So here's without. Not really <laughs> looking natural. And then we take it up. And then it looks like now we've just added some sun in behind the trees there. And that's an interesting way to actually add kind of some depth by adding some dimension, some light in behind everything. So I'm actually going to take it up even further like this. So here's before and here's after. We just kind of added the effect of a sun up above. And I'm going to pull the highlights back maybe or the clarity down. I don't like that this is being clipped so nastily, but I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. Okay. Lastly, she looks a little bit um, unnatural because she's bright and this rock kind of area beside her is not so much. So let's try just brightening this one spot here. Darken everything down. Eh, not bad. Here's before. Here's after. All depends what you like and what you're going for. I invite you to take a shot at this because it's actually kind of fun playing around with photos that are harder to edit. You can see and test your skills in a stronger way. Now lastly, I am feeling like part of the reason this looks unnatural is there's just not enough contrast and highlight on her face. So I'm going to attempt to add that a little bit. Okay, slightly better. I could keep messing around. I'm not going to. I think you get the point, and hopefully that was helpful. Okay, we got one last photo here, or two last photos, I guess. We'll just do this one, call it a day, and warm up the white balance. This is a beautiful shot. I love this lens, by the way. 18 to 35, it's perfect. Okay, warming up to around there. Add some magenta, maybe. We're going to do another sun flare up top because I feel like it would fit really nice. Again, there's nothing special about this preset. You literally can just copy these settings and save it yourself. It doesn't have to even be these exact settings. All we're essentially doing, let's start from scratch so you can see. Come on. We're going to make a nice big radial filter. Make sure your feathers all the way up. We're going to take our exposure, just crank it. Even like that, you can sometimes get away with. Then we're going to take our white balance, warm it up. We're going to take our contrast down, highlights up, shadows up, whites up, texture down, clarity down, dehaze down. Then you have this nice mobile little guy, saturation down a little bit. You can add a smidge of color if you want. Okay. And then make it absolutely giant so the feather's really large and really soft. And you can move it in where it needs to go. Kind of like that. Before, after. Okay. With that said, let's take our exposure down. Skin tones feel really weird in this image. I don't exactly know why. Maybe it's my white balance job. We're going to start with a hue. Take it more towards red. Maybe take the luminance of the skin down a little bit. Saturation in these yellows and greens I'm going to take down. And the luminance I'm going to take down as well. It's going to make them pop off the image a little bit more. And I think what's really thrown me is his suit. It doesn't have any color in it because of the white balance adjustment I made. And naturally it looks like maybe it was a little bit blue. So a couple options here. We could grab our blue and aqua. Take those up in the HSO, but it's not really doing much. Another option, take our vibrance, turn that up, take the saturation, turn that down. So that's going to make the greens and the blues in the image a little bit more saturated while keeping the skin tones from becoming too saturated. Okay. Let's undo our white balance a little bit. Add a little contrast. Okay, and then Garçon over here is just a little bit too bright compared to his bride. So we'll take his exposure down a little bit. 
good. Now, why doesn't this photo feel right to me? Honestly, I feel like the colors just aren't really working together. Like, there's just not enough color in the image. Something feels off about it. So I think if it were me editing an actual wedding like this, I'd probably put this particular shot in black and white. Something like that. I like to just add a little bit of eclipsed blacks to my photos. For more of a vintage feel, you could do the same thing with your whites if you want. Before, after. Or with the color, something like that. There you go. Now you can keep messing around. We could go to our calibration. All depends. I mean, at this point, we've made it extremely contrasty, so I'd probably not push it this far with an actual wedding. I'd want to keep it more natural, but there you go. A couple different options. Tag at Signature Edits Co. with whatever you come up with. Now we got one last photo. Uh, honestly, I think this one I'm just going to leave to you guys. What can you come up with? What cool creative stuff do you got? I think, again, because the colors aren't super interesting or adding to the image, I like to get rid of them because they're sort of distracting and we get some nice texture, some nice lighting once we switch to just black and white that we wouldn't necessarily notice otherwise. Right, and then because the background really isn't adding to the photo, I'm going to darken it way the heck down like that. Soften it. One more brush just to sharpen and bring out the texture of that weld a little bit more. Cool. And again, let's just do some clip blacks here. And some clipped whites. Okay. Before. After. It's an idea. Tag me with whatever you come up with. Now, I hope this video has been helpful in some way, shape, or form. If it was, please let me know in the comments below what kind of stuff did you get out of this? What are you going to apply? And what other ideas do you have for future edits? I'd love to hear from you. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. Subscribe for more great content. And if you want some free presets, templates, tutorials, you want to learn how to do better at your marketing, improve your business, any number of things, <laughs> head over to SignatureEdits.com. I'll try and hook you up with some free stuff. Check out the links below. All right, see you in the next video. And in the meantime, create something awesome, my friend. Peace.